One of the coolest thing about the Voron 3D printer is that you can do a lot of modifications to it, or mods, as they are known in the 3D printed world. Today I want to show you the first three changes that I did to my printer to get it as it is today. Some of them aesthetical, some of them more functional, and I hope that you find any of them interested. But first I want to say two things. Number one, I'm pretty new to all these of the 3D world printing, and I got a lot of help from the Voron community on Discord. If you're thinking about building one of these printers, you must go into the Discord channel, join them, talk to them, get a lot of advice from them because the guys there know a lot. And I managed to do all these changes thanks to them and finding out on the internet and well, because of my own skill set. But if you decide to copy or to do any of these ones, please check them out, make sure that they are working for you, that they will work for you. I'm not responsible for anything or any damage that you do to your printer. Number two, let's give some time to my sponsor. When you're working with 3D printers, especially the open source kind, you might find yourself wanting to print some circuit boards to complete your projects. It's here where PCBWay can help you. They contribute and have a close relationship with the open source community and have super affordable prices. Give them a chance and go to their website to check all the services that they have because it's not only about printed circuit boards, they have many other services that are going to help you complete your project. The Voron printer family is very well known by the capabilities of printing plastic as ASA or ABS. Those two are very well known because they expel gases, they smell a lot. Even though the ASA is a little bit better than the ABS, it's still something in there. And it's also known that if you breathe the same air where, when you are printing, it can get you some headaches. It's, it's like the gases are not good for you. There is where the Nevermore active filter comes in. It's an active filter that you can have inside the printer in order to absorb or filter all those gases coming from the ABS or the ASA. It has a blowing fan that not only helps get those gases through the carbon that is inside the filter, but also helps you move the warm, the heat inside the chamber so the temperature inside your printer is the right one when you are printing ASA or ABS, which is very important. Today, this filter is almost part of the design of the printer. Like almost everyone that is doing one of these printers will get one of these filters because it's gonna help you quite a lot on the process of printing ASA or ABS. There are two versions of this filter and one of them fits very well the Voron 0.1, which is version four of the Nevermore. The other one is a little bit bigger and it fits better on printers like the 2.4 or maybe the Trident. The one that fits on the V01 that I have here, it's called the V4. And I have it here on the side of my printer very well located, very well positioned. As you can see, you have a top section where you actually have the carbon pieces to filter those gases. And then you have the lower part of the item which has the blowing fan which moves the air through this filter and through the chamber in the printer. The upper part has four magnets that helps you get this part very easily here on the inside of the printer and it stays there without moving or anything. In my case, I decided to connect the printer directly to the heat sink fan so it's activated at the same time as the nozzle is warming up. The fan that I have inside is a 12 volt fan so it goes perfectly with this fan of the heat sink without any problem. But I read of people choosing to have a five volt fan, for example, and then you have to find a different place to connect the fan so you don't break it or you don't break something in. It's the only thing that you have to keep in mind. 
whatever you're connecting it, you have to have the right voltage, otherwise you can do some wrong things in there. Also in my case, I added a switch on the side of the printer that I have here. So when I'm printing something like PLA or TPU where I don't need that filter to be active or I don't need the chamber to be as warm as when I'm printing ABS, I can just turn off that fan and if it's sitting next to me then it's not gonna that fan is not gonna be bothering me with the sound all the time printing these parts is very easy you can do it in PTG or ABS if you want one thing is that there is one of the pieces that doesn't fit on the V01 which means that you have to print it somewhere else uh, if you want to use it. The most complicated part was actually to get the nuts inside the extrusions in order to attach the whole uh, part on it. Uh, as you know, or if you have built one of these ones, or if you are reading about building one of these ones, the nuts inside the extrusions has to be placed before you assemble everything because you don't have an easy way to put them after you have assembled it. But there is a little trick. If you get one square knot and you file both sides, one in front of the other, in 45 degrees and you file them enough, you're gonna be able to get that knot inside the extrusion without having to disassemble anything. It's not an easy job, it's a little bit fiddling. Uh, you have to find the right place to do it and you have to file quite a lot from that knot, but it works. That's the way that I did. I put the, the knots that I needed and they are sitting there perfectly. Number two, a chamber temperature monitor. When you're printing ASA or ABS, the temperature that you have in the chamber is very important. And that's the main reason why these printers, the Voron, are coming directly with an enclosure, this thing that you see around. I even have a hat that goes with it. The idea is that when you're printing, you should have something between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius inside here if you're using ASA or ABS. And in order to make sure that the temperature in the chamber is the correct one and that you have actually come to that 50 degrees or whatever you are targeting, you should have a thermometer giving you that information. Some people take the easy way and they use something like a small, regular, let's call it house thermometer inside and they can just place it somewhere on the back, for example, or something like that. But I went the, let's call it a little bit more complicated way, but also more elegant. What I did was to add another thermistor inside the chamber. I put it here on the top next to or in front of the Zeta end stop to do some kind of mirroring of that part and it would look much more symmetrical. I then connected that thermistor to the MCU that has on the back of the printer and I can control that information from the web UI I can even see a graph together with everything else that I have um, on the clipper interface. So you can see the chamber temperature, how it's going up or down, whatever you are doing. Smart people can use that information to do part of the scripts to start the printing and this kind of things. I don't get to that point yet. So I'm just using the information to, let's call it manual monitoring the situation of my printer. But again, it's pretty useful, right? You have the information, you don't have to be in front of the printer in order to know because you are not reading it from something like this small thermometer. You are reading it within the software, you have it plotted on a nice graph on the UI, and you can follow everything from your web UI. It's pretty cool, very simple. There is not a lot of information about this kind of modification. I got the part, the printed part, I got it from a user on the Discord, and I'm not sure, but I haven't seen that part in any GitHub or any Thingiverse or anything like that. I, I think he made it himself and he shared it with me one-to-one. -one. Also, 
if you ask on the Discord channel, there is a lot of different places where you can connect the thermistor. In my case, I connected it to the SP1 using ground and the MOSI pins, and I didn't have to add any kind of resistance or any kind of extra chipset or circuit or anything. I could connect it, connect it directly there and everything worked perfectly. You just need to do a modification on your printer configuration so you can point the plotting of the chamber temperature to the right pins on your MCU. I have read and I have heard on the Discord channel that people use this connection in other places on the MCU, on the, even on the same card. So there is more than one way to do this and just this one worked for me. It felt like the simplest one. I didn't have to add more cards or more secret boards and it's working well. I'm not 100% sure that the readings are super good uh, and, and exact and precise, but I think it's enough for me to have an idea if the chamber is on the correct level for me to start printing. And that's what I'm doing right now. Number three, lights on. The third modification that I did to the printer is kind of aesthetically only. I decided that I wanted to have some LEDs in order to illuminate the print and I could monitor with a webcam from other room uh, without having to have a specific lamp to it or anything like that. So what I did was to add some LED lamps to the extrusions on here on the top and connected to the NeoPixel port on the MCU. So I, again, I can control everything from the Clipper web UI. I can turn on and off the lights. And if you are good programming and if you know what you're doing, you can do a bunch of different and fun things. Like for example, you could say that the lights can turn specific color when the printing is starting or if there was an error you can blink red or you could use it as a progress bar for your printing so you know how close or how far you are from ending the printer there is a huge amount of things that you can do because these leds are rgb so you can do combination of the colors to do things and you can control them individually if you want. So you can have a couple of LEDs on one color, a couple of LEDs on another color, in order, for example, again, to create this progress bar that I'm talking about. This modification was pretty simple to do, uh, also very simple to connect, but I have to say that there are many different kind of ways to achieve the same goal. There are lights that can go here on the top, more pointing down. Uh, there's people that has it even on the lower extrusion, so you have it closer to the printed part. Um, there are, there's people that has bigger LEDs or even in closers to each one of the, the lights, so you can have better pointing of the light, I guess. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So you can find many, many different mods to do lights in your printer. I took a simple one, the part that I printed goes into the rail and since these top rails are easy to remove, I just needed to open them, slide this new part, connect or glue the LEDs to this part and there is where I have to say, let's say that it was the most complicated part of this modification because if you are not careful how you glue or how you insert the LED strip into this part, it can be that the heat inside the chamber when you're printing makes it to get away from the rail. And then you can have the lights hitting the, the rails or the, the, the print head and you can make a mess. And don't ask me how I know this, but I can tell you that is not a fun experience. The V0 motherboard has a NeoPixel port that can be used to control remotely the lights. You just have to make sure that you have a supported LED model for that NeoPixel port. In my case, I have the WS2812 model. 
They are small, five volt, you can have a strip, you can cut them, and you connect or you solder only three cables. Five volts, ground, and the signal. These LEDs are thought to be a full stripe, which means that if you have two sides, you should be connecting them serially. The end of one strip should be the beginning of the other ones. And that way you can control individually all the LEDs to do everything that I was mentioning before. I decided to make it a little bit different. I just decided to have two parallel sides, the same amount of LEDs on each one so I can control both of them, uh, kind of mirroring the configuration. And since I'm not planning yet to do a lot with different colors and these kind of things, I didn't mind to have exactly the same thing on one side than on the other one. As I've been saying, the MCU that I have has a NeoPixel port, which means that I just had to add a connector, a GST connector to those three cables coming from the strips and attach it directly to the board without any extra circuit or anything else. Then I had to do the configuration on Clipper to let it know that I'm using LEDs, that it's RGB that I have in there and which color I wanted to have uh, when the printer starts and with anything else. Just remember when you're doing the LED modification is two things. One is the kind of LED that you select is important. As I mentioned, it has to be five volts and with three pins in order to go directly to the NeoPixel port because there are some other LEDs that are 12 volts and they have four ports, for example. And the other thing is the thickness of that strip it has to fit whatever part you are printing to use it. There are LEDs that are much bigger than other ones and then you need to adapt to whatever you have. Either adapt it to the LEDs to the part of your printer or the other way around. The two first modifications that I show in the beginning was they were important for me to start printing ABS which is what I wanted to do with this printer. The third one, the LEDs, it was more for looks it's also useful for me because now I can have the webcam and just turn on the lights of the printer remotely from the computer and keep monitoring how the printing is going. But to be completely honest, it's not something that is necessary to print, right? It's something, it's an add-on, it's something cool to have. It was a fun project, but not as important as the filter or the chamber temperature if you are thinking about printing those filaments that I mentioned before. This is what I have for you now. I hope that you enjoy the video, you found any of these modifications interesting, and if you want to do any of them, I'm gonna have some information on in the description. But as I said in the beginning, Discord is your friend. Go there, ask everything that you want. People is super friendly and they will most probably help you without even blinking. Thank you for watching. See you soon.